Hi friends, uh, this is course on risk-based engineering uh, for safety critical systems and uh, I am Professor Prabhakar V. Varde. Uh, uh, I am a senior professor at uh, Humi Baba National Institute and uh, this is basically part of the national program on technology enhancement learning. And uh, today's topic is a probabilistic risk assessment qualitative modeling. PRA program follows, uh, there are three uh, major modules. One is that uh, uh, developing a organizational framework. Second is when the project starts, uh, it goes on into, uh, one is PRA qualitative modeling. And then uh, the third one is quantitative modeling. And later on, um, analysis, uh, you know, iteration for getting the uh, results, documentation, they form part of it. So let us discuss the PRA qualitative modeling aspect in this lecture. Uh, here outline is we will discuss uh, major steps involved in PSA. So even though uh, half will be here and half will be in the next, uh, next uh, um, uh, lecture. So, because we, here we are discussing only qualitative modeling. So, then quanti quantification will come in the next lecture. Uh, PRA project administrative management is one of the plant familiarization, uh, initiating event selection, grouping of initiating events, system modeling. These are various steps and development of component and plant uh, failure criteria. And then finally, accident sequence list, qualitative input for the next stage that is quantification. So let us discuss the remain in this lecture um, on qualitative aspect of uh, risk modeling, probabilistic risk assessment. Okay, um, the for limited scope PSA because I, I had been telling that uh, here our limited scope PSA will be the focus. Uh, so the major steps involved is uh, like organization and management. I think this we have discussed in our previous uh, previous lecture that is uh, organization and management and along with this we discussed even qualitative attrib attribute of PSA also. The next step is uh, as a uh, good practice or not as a good practice uh, for getting the intimate analysis, intimate results, uh, plant familiarization is very important. Uh, the PSA team member should uh, get a real insight from the plant and uh, and here uh, the, uh, it should uh, why this step is important uh, because uh, PRA modeling require a domain knowledge and domain knowledge will come only when the team is uh, uh, having a very good sense of plant operation design aspect maintenance aspect emergency aspect so plant familiarization is very important and uh, then once that is done, then uh, a list of initiating event, if you can remember our uh, slide, what can go wrong. So list of initiating event uh, is made. And uh, typically this uh, list might be uh, having something like 25 to, uh, 25 to 20 uh, initiating events. So and the only requirement about this step is the list of initiating events should be as complete as possible because uh, any uh, event left out uh, will will uh, will uh, leave some residual factor in terms of uh, safety or risk you know so then initiating event analysis uh, this is a well laid out procedure in fact uh, uh, this procedure in part we have discussed as part of our uh, system modeling, um, so basically inventory analysis and all that. And then the next step is uh, our accident uh, sequence modeling. Now initiating event analysis and accident sequence an uh, analysis uh, will tell us uh, what are all the systems that form the header event in the inventory. So that means we will get some idea about the system modeling and the failure criteria decision about um, uh, systems, components, 
and uh, a sequence level, you know. So, uh, uh, we, we do excellent sequence modeling and from there we get which are the system to be modeled and what should be their system failure criteria. Then this is a crucial step, data collection and analysis. Uh, if, uh, especially here, it, uh, uh, time and again it can be re-emphasized that uh, uh, plant specific data for operating plant. For design plant, this option is not available. But uh, for operating plant, the plant specific data should be used in the PRA model. And if we don't have data, then data is available from generic sources. Uh, they are available from the similar plant. Or, uh, so th those efforts can be made actually. Now, this, this is common cause failure. Uh, common cause failure uh, we have already covered actually, you know. And the um, um, common cause failure we have, we have discussed, so here we will not touch upon uh, this one. And uh, data collection and analysis uh, we will be discussing uh, quite a bit. But system modeling also we have discussed. You remember fault tree, um, event tree that we have discussed. So, um, fault tree is used for systems typically and event trees are used for generating the accident sequences. So, uh, we have here and this human reliability analysis we will not be having uh, in this uh, lecture. Why? Because there is a uh, separate uh, week devoted to this thing or separate chapter devoted uh, to human uh, reliability analysis and uncertainty modeling. In fact, uncertainty modeling also is a very uh, inherent component of PSA, but I am not touching upon here. Uh, but definitely in quantification, some part, part will be discussed here. Then accident sequence quantification, all what, whatever data we have, we quantify this, uh, 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 these aspects. And then finally, the results of the analysis, the uncertainty analysis, system uh, sensitivity analysis uh, are carried out and a document is produced. So this is the final, full and final steps. After this, this document goes for uh, regulatory uh, review. So this is the uh, complete or broad activities which are involved in PRA and our uh, scope here is uh, limited scope level 1 PRA. So let us see what goes. So uh, this particular aspect we have discussed uh, uh, earlier also that a project report uh, on PSA should be developed. Um, objective should be whether it is a regulatory requirement, ONM or R&D. Scope of example, so uh, limited scope, level 1 PSA could be one of the scope, especially when the plant is at the conceptual stage or even in uh, operation stage, when the first document is produ produced, um, level 1 limited scope should be done. Why? Because that gets going us for the future studies also, full scope and then level 2, level 3 and all. Uh, but then the maximum benefits are drawn in terms of safety improvement from level 1 PSA and that too from limited scope level 1 PSA. Um, and uh, resource and approval required methodology, what methodology should be used. Uh, there should be a, um, there should be awareness at uh, all levels in the organization that what kind of accepted methodologies that we are using what should be the timeline of the project, output expected, documentation and potential end application. Actually potential end application determines uh, the, uh, the, uh, the scope of the PSA, the objective of PSA and what that even to the extent that the depth of PSA uh, that is uh, required. You know. So uh, let us say plant familiarization. Though uh, it has been covered on uh, one uh, slide. But this activity is almost like uh, um, spreads over a month or maybe more even when the study is going on, the familiarization or uh, assessment of plant aspect uh, continues actually. So uh, first is plant familiarization means um, uh, referring, uh, referring through documents, design report, operation reports and from there trying to figure out what is this plant actually. Then uh, once that study is done, uh, a lecture program, lecture pr program can be before the studies of the document also uh, because uh, le lecture program will introduce, uh, introduce us what is the plant and then detail aspect we can learn through uh, manuals, interaction uh, on 
um, operation and regulatory aspect. If it is at the design stage, then design information. And then finally, if the plant is built already and uh, you know, uh, it is for everyone to visit or see uh, different areas, uh, different components, different systems, uh, then uh, a plant walk down. Uh, plant walk down uh, is an attractive option uh, because plant walk down is simply uh, the team goes around the plant and tries to see and the objective is to focus on which issues uh, and you know what are the uh, configurational arrangement uh, what are the elevation of the component system because flood PSA determines elevation uh, then fire PSA uh, uh, we have to see the separation between redundant units and then uh, seismic PSA should ensure that there is no weak uh, sections uh, where it can impact the system or uh, system uh, assurance level and then uh, interaction on organization and management the team uh, which is uh, in charge of performing PSA it meets uh, one the or the organizational high, higher hierarchy at the same time they might interact with the uh, ground staff or the operating staff to get the, uh, more information about uh, uh, how system works how what are the role of safety system performance and then typically um, uh, the performance of the component because at the end of the day it is the performance of the component which translates into the data and that data quality of the data that determines the quality of the PSA level then once this is sufficient confidence uh, has been generated uh, then uh, PRA team starts its work you know in fact, there are many activities they start uh, uh, even uh, in parallel to plant familiarization. Like what kind of quality framework is required, those activities can also go on in parallel. Um, documentation of uh, 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 PSA project report that can go on. So, so, uh, so that the future activity when the PRA team starts to work, uh, it should start in a full swing and uh, you know uh, the PSA project can go in, in the right direction and desired results can be obtained. Initiating events, now we saw that the, these are the basic, uh, uh, a plant is operating, it's a normal operation, everything is smooth, it is delivering its uh, uh, delivering its output and uh, ensuring that okay, it's so reliably operating. But any deviation or shutdown or any uh, accident condition a precursor to accident which is called initiating event um, that takes away the plant from normal operation to deviation and if its deviation is not controlled then it goes into the um, uh, mitigation and if mitigation activities are not uh, in place uh, then it gets, gets into the accident domain so initiating event is fundamental uh, to uh, the risk uh, modeling and analysis so let us understand what is the uh, what we mean by initiating event an initiating event is an event that uh, creates a disturbance in the plant it could be deviation it could be transient and has a potential to lead to the core damage potential to core it it 99.99% it doesn't go to the core damage uh, because plant has safety provisions okay so the safety provisions they 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 swing in and that they bring back plant to the normal state depending on the successful operation of various safety system and mitigation center of the plant so the 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 safety system they are sitting uh, uh, sitting standby the moment any disturbance is det detected or any transient is detected they come into action and again bring back the plant to the normal state this is the normal scenario so now if we see the background uh, in respect of initiating event any initiating event list should be as complete as possible and should reflect the as built as operated uh, uh, should be reflection of as built as operated plant Keep you, keeping in view the occurrence level of the set of innovation there are some initiating event they are like transient which are basically like uh, will have a frequency like one in, in a year like power supply grid failure in one in a year or less than uh, uh, that uh, this could be the frequency these are also initiating event and if they are also not controlled then um, 
it can the deviations are not controlled then the plant might swing into so, um, you know um, uh, threat condition so uh, immediately the safety system should bring it down uh, the uh, on site power supply should come and uh, should uh, take care of uh, take care of, of course the plant will be shut down but then the safety will be ensured by, by ensuring cooling by ensuring the that everything is uh, behaving as intended um, and all that but there are some initiating events which uh, which are uh, part of the accident regime like loss of coolant accident but the good thing is their frequency is very low so generally uh, the contribution because loss of coolant accident is a very rare event and it may not happen during the life of the plant but uh, as a conservative principle uh, these events are considered they are monitored uh, you know uh, the plant is monitored for any precursor to initiating event like loca or class 4 power failure and uh, in the given time the corrective action or mitigation action, safety action or mitigative actions are taken to bring the plant to again normal state the frequency of eyes are estimated as part of pr program and these frequencies they might come or they should come at to the extent possible from plant specific source like initiating event for operating plant but if it is a design stage thing then either from the uh, other plant in the in the uh, in the country or from generic source it can be taken and at the end of the day sensitivity analysis can be performed to see uh, the uh, sensitivity of this initiating event frequency uh, to the uh, outcome of the uh, results that is at level 1 core damage frequency so uh, there are ways and suppose if we uh, feel uh, that okay uh, we are setting up a plant in the new area and uh, we don't have initiating event frequency but then a general generic survey can be carried out okay, what is the frequency of grid failure and extended grid failure small grid failure may not impose uh, safety consequences but extended grid failure and from there we can build our database and with conservative estimate we can determine our conservative frequency and as the plant comes into operation then we can fine tune this uh, frequency actually now uh, a list of initiating event formulation uh, 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 and it should be a very uh, very uh, thorough activity uh, so what goes into making this uh, list as complete as possible first of uh, uh, we take plant operating experience and, and in that uh, all the events are analyzed that can they take form of an initiating event any potential or a, a, can they be a precursor any event they can be precursor to um, power supply failure or you know, for lo loss of coolant accident uh, and many many other things and uh, uh, and then they, this particular our frequency is compared with the literature what is the events that are available so there are two ways one way is uh, we can adopt the list available from the literature um, uh, if there is agreement or uh, consensus or we can learn from or we can do Bayesian updating the, it is the best thing so that means it, uh, if we do Bayesian updating I am taking my plant data also at the same time I am taking data from the generic source also available list of from similar plant if I am doing PSA for X plant PRA from for one plant uh, if there is another plant uh, which has been operating for earlier or uh, there is a similar site I can take that data also uh, then master logic di diagram it is an analytical approach what I will do is I will take the unsafe situation on top and what can contribute to it is a uh, deductive approach Okay, so master, master logic di diagram is frequently used. What are the threat condition and how the individual uh, configuration of system support that, that uh, those threat condition? There are categories and there are different levels. Uh, so master logic diagram, in a way, uh, taking input from safety analysis and uh, postulating the scenario, it can provide a list of initiating event, a review of plant specific aspects. So plant operating experience and plant specific aspects. Um, if it is a plant specific aspect, I can take a similar plant and I can learn from there. Was there any event in that plant in, uh, in, uh, which was could have had lit potential which has not happened there also. So I can uh, bring that to my plant specific aspect. Now, now I have got a, uh, uh, I got a list of initiating events which we will call preliminary list of initiating event. Then what are the 
events which are applicable to my plant uh, because I have, uh, I have addressed generic source also. So uh, I'll filter out those things. Now there are uh, criteria to uh, screen out the event and screen in the event. Um, so uh, there we require sometimes subjective things are there. So some decision has to be made and uh, we take okay, in or out a certain event. We match with this some screening criteria. Let us say if my screening criteria for uh, accidental event is um, loca, if it is uh, uh, tennis for minus 4 or tennis for minus 5, or so I will take those events because in my plant if I involve them into the accident sequence, the, uh, the frequency will go to a uh, very hypothetical value. So a screening criteria uh, can be used. And then finally the list should be reviewed and should be approved. Uh, at uh, various level for the uh, PRA study. So this is how we uh, make we formulate the list of initiating event. It, this is the, all these jobs are happening at the qualitative level. Only quantitative level we are using some criteria, but they are not part of our uh, initiating uh, event list quantification. Okay. So this is what, then then uh, there are some events. It is called grouping activity. The screening of the event uh, uh, has been done, then they are grouped because you know this saves our effort at the same time that this brings in clarity. Okay, this type of events they need a similar treatment. Let us say uh, in loss of coolant accident, there are four or five categories. Now, if the safety system response uh, required is same, that means same event tree header events will work for these events, they can be put under one group. Okay. And there are, uh, so the grouping is based on the safety system requirement uh, and then further depending on the severity of the uh, event, uh, events can be like suppose uh, if I have leakage type of events and if I have uh, leak beyond certain things, so major loca, minor loca. So they, uh, there can be a two uh, event category uh, and the, then the, it, this one will be called minor loca, that is small loca, other will be called as major loca. So like that we can categorize it because the response of safety system required will be different. Why? Because a minor loca there are uh, certain systems required they can easily bring back the system under control. But the same systems are uh, not uh, uh, or some additional system will be required when I go for major loca and their timing will be a constant actually. So treatment will be required. So two groups are created like that. In uh, actual PR, PRA study, there are host of events and something like 20 plus events or more, more uh, uh, in a final list of initiating event. And the criteria here is list should be as complete as possible. Now, uh, the, uh, the, the, the initiating event list also has to do with the plant condition. If the plant is in operation, then the initiating event list is one and if plant is in shutdown, uh, then that list along with additional list also will come into the picture. Or we have to, uh, in general we have to say that we have to revisit the our initial list uh, for correction. Correction means uh, initiating event uh, list they requires, if it is plant in shutdown instead. So, uh, how long the plant remains in operation and those events are available and how long the plant remains shut down and if those initiating events are there then what fraction of time will go into that. So this kind of activity is done for shutdown, low power operation, full power operation and therefore external event list. So external events are handled uh, uh, like, uh, like we can have flooding, fire. Flooding and fire can be internal, it could be uh, uh, external also, external thing, uh, flooding impacting internal thing. So these are also, uh, there is a uh, cross communication uh, and this analysis should reflect that. Okay. Uh, system failure criteria. Uh, now our uh, initiating events are selected. Now what should be the, uh, what should be the criteria when we declare that uh, certain failures have taken in the process system have taken the form of initiating event. So failure criteria is required or all the feeder failures are required. So that will be uh, our, our failure criteria. Now failure criteria is an inherent component in PSA uh, which is uh, applicable at component level. If I want to say 
uh, a diesel generator has failed. That means it is not developing certain voltage, voltage uh, which it should develop. Okay. So other, below that we will call, we'll call it as failed. Now uh, if we take it system level, if, if, if it is system level, what should be the failure, failure criteria? If our diesel generator is not able to take the minimum set load in terms of kilowatt, uh, then we call it as a uh, that uh, system level uh, it is failed. Now at plant level, um, if this uh, uh, the criteria uh, can be um, that like core damage, how core damage is taking place? Uh, what are the input factors for contributing to the core damage? Like any lo lo local event not terminated safely. So uh, then it is called as uh, and the failure criteria has to be worked out. Now. Uh, at plant level, appear accident sequence terminating into unsafe state. Uh, this we have discussed in our day. So conservatively, when we start a PRA activity, um, if we don't have much information, so this is very clear. Okay, any accident sequence not terminating safe uh, form part of the uh, core damage frequency. Though this is where the criteria help, uh, and as the uh, as study matures, the criteria also. Uh, uh, um, the, if the uh, criteria information is available, then we can make it more filtering and all that and uh, further fine tune the core damage definition at system level, uh, plant level. Okay, now typical list of, because since we are uh, discussing it, typical list of uh, internal events uh, could be like, you know, um, loss of upside power, which is a, uh, which is called anticipated occurrence. That means it will occur during the life of the plant and the safety system provisions are accordingly. Uh, anticipated transients, any failure in the plant or outside and that this is called anticipated transient but that doesn't uh, shut down uh, the uh, plant. Then it is called and this has got a different category. Now uh, the plants are designed in a manner that this particular thing is seen less and all but then still it form parts of part of our uh, analysis, then loss of flow. Everything is there but um, flow is not taking place, power is also there, L loss of flow is, uh, has to ha happened, uh, some choking, something. So loss of flow accident is one of the LOFA, it is called LOFA and then loss of regulation. Uh, every industry has got its own uh, control system or its own uh, core behavior. Uh, which it has, which has got its own contribution. So for nuclear, it is a loss of regulation uh, incident. In fact, now this event is called LORI, loss of regulation incident now. It doesn't form part of the, uh, but then uh, in PRA, it is investigated uh, because uh, likelihood of this has to be determined and shown that it is in the hypothetical domain. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, uh, major loca, minor loca, and there are so many uh, other type of loca, uh, then steam generator. So, the, uh, typically you will find uh, tens of events, they are the entering the final stage of, uh, initial stage of PRA for which modeling is required. And this is, we are doing at the, uh, uh, this is we are doing at the um, qualitative level. Okay. Now, um, uh, how to uh, understand the loop uh, loss of upside power accident sequence the outside of the outcome of uh, event tree uh, because you know um, event tree is at the heart of uh, accident sequence modeling and what we get at the qualitative level number of accident sequences a list of accident sequences and what is a list of accident sequences uh, if x and Y and Z system fail, then it becomes an accident condition. So it is. these are called accident sequences. And X, Y, Z are what? They are safety function. They are safety. Initiating event is one. Initiating event is assumed to have occurred. Now this safety function, whether they are, we'll see in event tree, how uh, uh, the logic works. The outcome uh, to, to be any. So uh, for defining the core damage, uh, for uh, loss of upside power, which is the subject here. This whole PSA process, uh, qualitative and quantitative, I have explained uh, through loss of upside power, loop we call. So I will be using the term, term loop frequently here. So 
uh, what could be the different core damage threat? One is safe, so it is not a core damage. Threat to safety function has been detected. So uh, SAF threat is there. Delayed core damage because in time domain, say phenomena propagate, you know. So if uh, a system is not there, which will not immediately produce the uh, uh, core damage, but it might uh, produce later, uh, later on. So it is called core damage. And then finally core damage. And if some system, if they fail, it result into severe core damage. Now, uh, uh, we have to remember one thing. As we go down from safe to severe core damage state, the difference is frequency of safe is very high. So that means no, no moderation. High means uh, 10 to the power minus 4. And if I come to severe core damage, it will be 10 to the power minus 12. So don't, uh, let's not get, uh, you know, uh, subjective by uh, looking at the definitions, uh, the, as the uh, severity increases uh, from core damage to go core uh, severe core damage, the frequency also reduces. And for severe damage level, the, the consequences, even though it has been shown high, but the likelihood is very small. So total risk will be very small actually. You know. So this has to be understood. And finally, suppose if I want to estimate what is the contribution of uh, loop to the total core damage. So I'll say CD loop and it is summi summation of core damage states that is accident sequences uh, coming from i is equal to 1 to n. And 1 to n could be uh, accident sequences. We'll, we'll see this uh, um, uh, further also. Now, uh, accident sequence analysis, uh, here the objective in this lecture is qualitative. And there are two levels. Accident sequence analysis uh, at quanti quantitative level and at quality level. Uh, and generally, inventory approach is uh, used uh, even now. Now, there is a move to use uh, dynamic inventory, but 90% uh, of studies in uh, world over, they are on uh, static inventory. Because there are, uh, even though developments are taking place, uh, there are uh, challenges when the inventory becomes very big. Uh, it requires uh, computationally very expensive or you know sometimes prohibitive. So uh, those uh, R&D is going on, but to a large extent, it is a static inventory. Watch what we will be discussing. Uh, real time aspect. See, uh, um, the uh, the one inventory will run into 10 to 20 pages or maybe more also. They are very complex actually, and these type of inventories cannot be solved or, uh, you know, by um, uh, hand calculations. So computer programs are required and here is the role of the computer programs which are available in the market, uh, PRA tools, uh, we can use it and, uh, uh, you know, um, they, are, they are very uh, user friendly sort of tool. There is a database, you can create your own database. You uh, want to create inventory, you can create inventory at the click of the buttons and all. And then, uh, th then you can input the data and then you, uh, get the excellent sequences. These are, uh, since we are uh, dealing in academics and R&D, uh, these lectures, we are giving, giving details at each and every step. But actually, uh, a good amount of job is done by computer, whether it is Monte Carlo simulation, whether it is logic processing, uh, cut set generation, everything is done by the, by the computer. So, uh, the, so my, our, we, at present we are not going into quantitative demand in this lecture. Next lecture will be on quanti quantitative demand. So major output of uh, accident sequence modeling is like this. Uh, so first let's discuss major input is a final list of postulated initiating event is the input required for accident sequence modeling. Uh, a lot of deterministic information. Uh, because as I told you, deterministic uh, uh, analysis is a very uh, document uh, which is available and that input has to come to the uh, risk modeling. So DSA information is required, requirement of safety system and in initiating events, uh, we have to have it. Uh, qualitative system fault tree uh, form the header event. So we should know what are all the safety systems available uh, to mitigate or to take the plant to the safe level, uh, th that information, their capability, uh, and then their failure criteria, all those things should come to uh, the um, uh, accident sequence, even at qualitative level. And then finally, and the most important, how this sequence, this uh, uh, 
this uh, um, safety system they will enter into uh, or will get inducted uh, automatically in the plant um, when an initiating event occurs. So it is called then you have to order those uh, uh, safety system uh, they have to placement in a chronological order as they will come during temporal domain. And the major output is the list of accident sequences which is so crucial which tells us which are the combination of the uh, systems uh, which will take plant from um, uh, plant from normal operation to the uh, damage levels. Then uh, safety system qualitative modeling. Now we have done with the inventory. Now we, have, we safety system we see that identification of safety system. We will identify when we are doing it uh, uh, which safety system is. Um, now here in this section we will be discussing how to model safety system. Safety support system, engineering safety feature and one more important thing is human action. So that means all the four, arrow, uh, all the four arrows here, uh, they are put um, here, uh, they are basically called safety functions. Uh, and uh, here category is safety system, safety support system, engineering safety feature and human actions. Because human actions, even though it is not anticipated during accident condition, but during later part human actions are important to uh, in decision making, uh, system change, configuration and all that. Uh, and if it is the action is not taken in timely manner, it has potential to take the plant into the unsafe state. Identification of unavailability of modeling techniques and uh, what are the tools that we re will require, uh, role of fault tree, uh, possibility of safety system contribution to initiating event. Safety system, initiating event is not failure of process system. Initiating event should be checked, they can, the safety system failure can be source of it. This particular analysis form part of the PRA. That no safety system contribute to initiating event. If it contributes, then it should be listed in the list of initiating event. Identification of common cause failure events uh, is uh, definitely part of any uh, level, whether it is a sequence level modeling, safety system modeling, that we have to do it actually. Okay. Now let us see, uh, we have come to here, the event tree has been drawn here. Um, uh, we have, I have shown event tree earlier also, but, but this event tree is there for loss of offside power loop, as I was discussing. And what are all the safety system required? They are, they are, they form the header events here. You can see. Now in this event tree, um, given this thing, okay, this event has occurred. Its frequency comes to around one per year, or slightly less than one per year. So this frequency estimate is available. So we can see uh, for the discussion purpose, I have taken only emergency power supply system detail analysis. Similarly, these moldings are also for primary shutdown system, secondary shutdown system, human uh, action and decay heat reward. Similar treatment what we are giving it to emergency power supply system. Uh, please note here that I will be using emergency power system and class 3 interchangeably. Because in uh, safety parlance, uh, emergency power supply system is called class 3 systems. Okay. So uh, now we have the event tree. Now how event tree is drawn and basically how the accidents uh, are propagated on the event tree if you have to tell that. Uh, you see here when the line goes up then it is a success. When there is a downward line then it is a failure. Uh, this can be seen in any book very, very elementary aspect. Up movement is success that means primary shutdown system if it got activated, it is a success, we go up and then once primary shutdown system has come, no need to check secondary shutdown system, it is not required. So we will check whether class 3 power has come, the, if class 3 power or emergency power has come, then no problem, we go further and human action is not required, so no deviation is shown. Finally decay heat removal system has come. So then the event 1 has been leveled here, loss of offside power, it is safe, consequences are safe. So like that we will see the whole event tree. Now class 4 power has, uh, uh, the loss of offside power is also referred as class 4 power. So loop has happened and then uh, 
uh, even though this system, primary system, system has come, but class three power has not come. And then finally, uh, uh, if it is a, but further if we go up and we see that, uh, that event three, uh, even DHR system has come. So event three also no threat, uh, okay. Class three system has not come. So there is a threat component, but, uh, but safety threat is there. So we are on to this uh, qualitative accident sequence analysis. Uh, fault tree and inventory are central to uh, probabilistic risk assessment. And uh, um, just uh, I had given one example of uh, inventory and fault tree, but now since uh, we are discussing uh, step by step procedure for probabilistic risk assessment, uh, the first thing I would like to tell you here is that the software tool uh, which are available for PRA, uh, they provide facility for um, uh, making fault tree and inventory, you know. So since it is a graphical procedure, those tools are available and it really takes very uh, less time to develop inventory. But as I told you, inventory is in, these are simplified inventories just for the illustration purpose. Event trees are uh, uh, very big uh, and uh, they run into uh, starting from 5 to 2 page or 3 page to 20 pages and all that. And number of accident sequences also, uh, they vary into hundreds or hundred plus also. So this is the complexity of event tree analysis, which is taken care by software. So uh, one point you will see in my lecture, I have uh, kept mathematics as far as possible out of the things. At the same time, uh, if you use this knowledge, even manually you can do uh, risk assessment for a plant, but if software is there, your uh, efforts come down like, uh, you know, maybe to 15%, 20%. Um, even with that, uh, one PRA study takes uh, three to four years, you know. So uh, you can imagine um, the complexity of performing a PRA. Now let's say uh, the uh, class four power or loss of upside power has occurred in the plant and uh, you have this uh, uh, line which is saying that power supply loop event has occurred. Now it's a frequency as I told you it might be will go into the quantification and then the moment it occurs the demand goes to uh, sh uh, starting the primary uh, initiating the uh, primary shutdown system. Um, so if primary shutdown system comes that means the uh, heat production in the system or uh, reactor has stopped and uh, uh, that uh, and then secondary shutdown is not required it remains standby and uh, finally uh, so on top if you move it is success if you go bottom uh, uh, it is a failure so success on top for uh, uh, failures towards uh, down line actually you know so uh, it has come then uh, class 3 power has as uh, shown here it has uh, started and then finally uh, human action is not required because decay heat removal system is on its own and then um, so here the in event one uh, no uh, uh, consequences it is safe uh, but as we let, 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 let's see this is the extreme case if uh, uh, a loss of upside power event has occurred and then if the primary shutdown system uh, doesn't come and secondary shutdown system also doesn't come, then the reactor uh, has got a, a severe accident uh, core damage scenario. Now all the scenarios will fall between safe and severe core damage. Let us say uh, that primary shutdown system, uh, uh, primary shutdown system has not come, but the secondary shutdown system has come because you know in, uh, in complex uh, systems, uh, there is always a redundancy even at system level also. So primary shutdown system is backed up by secondary shutdown system which gets signal that it has to initi get initiated. It comes in and takes over. So a reactor heat production is stopped. But in, uh, in spite of that, um, if decay heat removal system has come, then seven, you can see second, again it, it is safe. But the moment you come to eight, eight has got 
core damage uh, sequence. Why? Because the decay heat removal system has not started for some reason, whatever. So wherever decay heat removal system has not, because uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, a nuclear reactor, even if the plant is shut down, there is a fraction of uh, uh, heat production uh, that uh, still continues. Uh, it is a 5% or 7% you know, and it goes on coming down. So uh, that heat removal uh, uh, has to occur and that is done by decay heat removal system. Okay, now let us take one more node here. Uh, primary shutdown system has come, but class 3 power has not come. But if the class 3 power has not come, uh, the uh, decay heat removal system is operating because of some other, other source, some uh, again diverse uh, system, which I have not shown here. Otherwise, the uh, event tree would have been become very complicated. So if it is come, uh, the decay heat removal system comes, then we are in safe. Item number 3, safety threat. That means our margin has come down because uh, because our class 3 system is not available. And here, uh, if you see, if the decay heat removal doesn't come, then it leads to the uh, co uh, core damage, event number uh, 4. Event number 4 is uh, core damage. S same logic you can apply and you will find that, uh, that uh, uh, item number 2, uh, that is sequence number 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 and 13 they represent core damage figure. Now, if I get the simply here, uh, uh, we can say that if I have uh, the core damage uh, addition for the seven event, if I had frequency, it will give me contribution of core damage from the system. Now, now header events are all for each one, uh, the detailed fault trees have been de developed, but I have shown for emergency power because I am dealing with a loop event, loss of offside power. So, um, uh, respectively, the input will come from other fault trees also, uh, qualitative or quantitative, and that's how the event uh, uh, development will be complete. For demonstration, I have taken a loop event, and for that, class 3 that is on site power supply source or emergency source is required. So, this is all the description at qualitative level here. Now, uh, these accident sequences have come. What do we do with uh, these accident sequences? Definitely, those seven events which I indicated, I, uh, here you can see here, uh, I am writing uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 7. So, if they, if they get added up uh, CD level, now you will get the contribution of CD uh, from the loss of offside power. And that's how, uh, when you apply to different initiating event, uh, procedure remains same and you have uh, contribution of core damage uh, at qualitative level, all those accident sequences are listed out. And then finally, um, it goes for um, in second stage for quantification also. So here if you see um, the uh, loop event, accident sequence and their uh, safety consequences, same table I have copied here. Why? Because um, it should be easily um, uh, comprehensible uh, and understandable. So I have repeated here, there is nothing new in this one. Um, now, uh, now excellent sequence I got, it's a uh, very effective integration that I have got loop related excellent sequences. I go to the next system uh, to demonstrate the procedure for system modeling and I have used the class 3 power supply or emergency power supply. I will be using it interchangeably class 3 or interchangeable because in safety parlance class 3 power supply or uh, emergency power supply they mean the same thing actually, okay. So, uh, so, so uh, generally um, DL generator are, uh, are uh, classified as um, emergency power supply. Of course, plants have batteries and uh, rectifiers and uh, even a DC is converted into AC. Um, probably it is, it is interesting to note that the kind of defense in depth and the, uh, uh, all the defense mechanisms are there. Uh, in short, uh, I will be able to say, if I detail, uh, if I develop a detailed event tree, then even if class 3 power fails, the class, three, uh, cl class 2 power, that is, uh, again, it is like DC power converted uh, through inverter to AC power. That can take a uh, plant to the safe state, uh, at least for finite time, uh, whatever the provision has been made. So, now safety system fault tree from the uh, head. So now we are uh, here onwards, we are talking this system modeling in two parts. One is qualitative modeling and quantitative modeling, the way we did for uh, event tree system or accident sequence analysis system. Now safety system fault tree are uh, giving input to all, all the header events. 
respective input to all uh, header events and the, uh, the this is how integration at event tree and fault tree it happens for giving the core damage uh, states the qualitative system modeling requires information on what are the modes of uh, system like um, uh, see, so here what is required is uh, which failure mode we should uh, consider so uh, the mode which take the system to the uh, unsafe state so and uh, which system mode then the next question is failure mode is it like uh, for example if a wall failed to open fail to close or if a circuit short circuit open circuit so like this type of modes are there i i think i have given the um, uh, the list wherein the failure modes have been uh, indicated generally a professional fault tree analysis software is required again here also uh, the one environment for pra it facilitates fault tree modeling also the output of fault tree is a central value it could be mean median and then along with that it will be having lower bound and upper bound why because lower bound and upper upper bound is taken as indication of uncertainty in the data and this is a very elegant mechanism to uh, to uh, to uh, define uncertainty uh, for uh, for the point value of the uh, estimates of unavailability or unreliability second output is a list of minimal cut sets uh, with respect to unavailability and depending on the choice of the analysis uh, cut set importance you know uh, the again the same software environment it provides you a facility for importance and uh, analysis and uh, then contribution from each accident sequence to the main event so right in front of you we can see the list uh, and uh, uh, computer generated list and we can uh, figure out uh, which are the uh, cut set which are uh, ranking very high in in terms of uh, risk significance especially uh, risk significant cut sets uh, will have either a single order it will have a common cause failure or two order uh, two redundant component or you know so like that you will see a list of cut set and that helps us to uh, understand the safety significance of each component so with this background on uh, system modeling now let us take one example of a simple uh, uh, system wherein uh, the normally the power class 4 power or offset power you get from the grid for your plant you have cb means circuit breaker i have given the legends here and diesel dj means diesel generator so this is a class 4 bus you know so when power comes here all these buses class 4 loads are basically for operational loads and class 3 loads are basically for safety uh, safety loads uh, like, uh, like this so for safety loads we require a redundant power supply class 4 is there when plant is operating when the plant is shut, shut down uh, then you have this uh, class 3 buses fed by diesel generator and you can see here the scheme the bus c and d they are fed from the diesel generator uh, one and two respectively uh, and this is how the, our configuration we are considering for our fault tree modeling or and here uh, if we look at the fault tree analysis so uh, you you'll find that class 3 power failure occurs either under voltage on bus c and bus d you can say here bus c and bus d here so so this will lead to uh, class 3 power failure okay now um, uh, this becomes the intermediate event uh, in, in fault tree uh, parlance this events this is top event this event is called uh, uh, intermediate event and these are logic processing gate this is end gate here that means unless until under voltage uh, is the signal when when there is no supply under voltage will occur so uh, then that under voltage will be taken as an indication of that that uh, class 3 power supply or emergency power supply is not available either on bus and c and d and now uh, redundancy is there what we are saying is in short uh, diesel generator 1 and 2 um, any one if it is available then it is uh, it is uh, good for us actually so uh, the failure of uh, that is under voltage when bus C will occur when uh, power supply is not there from DG and uh, uh, power supply from bu bus D that means alternate bus because there is a uh, there is a breaker in between so alternate bus uh, that means other DG is also, also operating similarly uh, under voltage on bus D will uh, happen uh, will go to get true when DG2 is not supplying and from other bus also the power supply is not there 
So you, you can see, see here, and finally this has been drawn as a, uh, but then the DG1 failure and power supply from bus D. So this, there is or get either this or this should, uh, should happen, uh, sh sh this and this should happen to under, under voltage. And for or get bus DG will have a fail. If DG1 fails, it's a breaker fails. Common cause failure occurs. Common cause DG, you can see similar nomenclature we are using on both the sides. Because common cause is a failure of two components. There is two DG for a single cause. So this is a common nomenclature in, to be given in the software. Uh, and DG2 uh, supply, DG2, CB8, this one. So like that, this fault tree has been uh, built. And uh, the, if we do the cut set analysis, we'll find that uh, common cause failure of DG, um, then DG1 and DG2 failure, CB7 and DG2 failure, DG1 and CB8 failure, that is other side breaker, CB7 and CB8 failure. This uh, will lead to, uh, this is called the minimal cut set generation, uh, which again done by the software only, but here we have done ma manually, so using the uh, Boolean algebra, we can say. And then the reduced fault tree comes like this. Independent failure, DG1, DG2 train, uh, DG1, CB7, and uh, so, sorry, DG1 or CB7, and DG2 or CB8. So this multiplication happens, and we get this cut set, and common cause failure DG, it comes. So this is called the re reduced fault tree. Um, now, having come to the reduced fault tree, now we, we in system modeling, um, we'll uh, stop for this lecture because the quantification has been done in the uh, in the next lecture. So role of PRA project proposal report. So PRA project proposal should list out which are the system that are being considered as part of uh, PRA. And uh, uh, for especially uh, this uh, uh, special components like diesel generators and all, uh, the root of people uh, or you know ground, uh, uh, ground staff uh, along with the experts uh, should be considered for making the fault tree because often the site related information is, uh, uh, is available from the uh, ground staff and uh, uh, any uh, logical or any you know configuration arrangement or interlock logics they, it is, it, is, it comes from the domain expert. Procedural steps involved in create, uh, creating a qualitative model of PRA that we have discussed. Further gener generating the uh, resource and expectation in uh, in quantification of PRA model. Uh, so next stage is, uh, so we have to be careful that uh, whether we have the resources for quantification uh, in terms of expertise and in, in terms of uh, uh, fault tree draw, uh, drawing and it's a uh, iteration because uh, any fault tree uh, uh, till, till it reaches the finalization, there are so many iterations are performed. Uh, and uh, so so many assumptions, methods, they are discussed, then only the fault tree, and then only it is linked to the event tree. Need of, sometime need of special analysis uh, also required. Uh, for example, if you have a new component, now for that thing, uh, testing as well as analysis is required uh, to characterize the kind of confidence or the probability data that we can have in that component. Or even for existing system also, uh, there are sometimes uh, almost no data or if data is available, they have a lot of uncertainty. So we have to generate those data. Um, so after this uh, overview, let us uh, move to the next lecture and thank you for your attention.